Okay, so you've got your own um, custom kite. So you can design yours as you want to. So I've got the sun, Icarus hanging underneath. Okay, so we're gonna uh, rebuild our own kite. Now the kite itself is based on the tales of ancient Greece. Okay, I'm talking about one particular Greek myth, which is the myth about Icarus and Daedalus. Okay, so they studied the birds, they collected feathers, and they used uh, wax um, and a wooden frame to build their own set of wings. They, they flew off, um, Icarus got a bit excited, started to fly too close to the sun. And of course, the wax started to melt and soften, and um, he fell and plunged into the sea, and all Daedalus could do was watch, he couldn't help. Uh, so we're going to create our own Icarus character and um, hang Icarus from our mock kite as you've already seen. Let's get started. Okay, so let's run through the materials and the equipment that you need to build your Icarus kite. All right. Start off with, uh, need a couple of milk containers. Now they don't have to be this large. Uh, these are six pints. We just need something that we can get this ergonomic handle, this nice, friendly, comfortable handle from. And I'm going to use the spout to run the string through and then tie that around here so we can, we can control the kite. So we need two. We also need um, a pizza base. Now it doesn't have to be a pizza base. You could go for just drawing around a large dinner plate uh, to create the sun that's going to go on our pillowcase, which is another thing we need. Now the pillowcase I've gone for is a standard white pillowcase. You can see where the sun will go. Um, we're going to have some kind of fiery flames coming out through here, and we're going to use blue paint to create the sky and the backdrop. And we're going to use the red and the yellow paints. I'm going for acrylics here to create our kind of sun in the middle. Now, um, I'm considering doing mine, okay, on both sides. I recommend you do the same thing. And uh, that is done white because I think that these colours here will show up a little bit stronger uh, on a white background as opposed to, say, for instance, if we went for a blue pillowcase, which is sky coloured, you might find it difficult to get the, the red and the yellow to really come through as strong colours. So I'm, I'm going with white and I recommend you do the same. Okay. What else do we need? Uh, we also need, as well as a pizza base, a lot more cardboard. So we're after a cardboard box that you can find and cut up. So raid your recycling bin, see what you can find. Now, um, elastic bands. We need around five elastic bands, uh, standard kind of size. They can be different size if you, know, if you can't find all the same size. Um, and we can make these work. They're quite adaptable being elastic. Okay. We then need um, some Pritt stick to help us to glue parts together. We're going to use tape here and there. Um, I don't want to use too much tape because tape um, on the character itself shows up really strong. And if you decide to paint your character, you can see it. So you can go for sellotape, which is clear. But then if you did want to paint it, you would struggle to get the paint to sit on top of the sellotape. So uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of masking tape just to kind of connect bits that are otherwise difficult to connect. So I've got here, for instance, the cord to the plastic hanger. So underneath the whole of the wings here is uh, an upside down hanger. Okay. And the hanger um, gives us the strength we need and the, the curvature. Right. What else we got? We have some uh, garden hose, okay, you need to ask permission for this. I raided my garden hose at home and chopped off one, two, three, four, five, six parts, okay? Um, and we're going to use little kind of joints uh, to help connect the frame together, which is going to sit inside the pillowcase to give the pillowcase the structure it needs. A kite always has a structure, so we need to do the same. Right, now going through these parts are bamboo, if you have any kind of bamboo or garden cane um, at home, these are good. You're going to need to use a hacksaw to chop that to length. Okay, hacksaws are very fine to saw. Again, get adult permission to help you do that. Be careful where you do it. Don't chop the kitchen table by accident, etc. What else we got? 
Uh, I've got here some tent rods. Now the tent rods are the bit that's going to form the main structure that holds the kite up in front of you. Okay, I mentioned that we need to use a toilet roll. At any point in the entire build, there is no toilet roll. So what's it for? The toilet roll helps us to measure everything out. So instead of using rulers, we're going to use a toilet roll, because I figured you've all got one. Now, um, if I look at my toilet roll, I have got this, which is T, the length of the toilet roll. Okay, so we're going to use parts that we're going to measure out in the length of T, the length of a toilet roll. Then the other dimension we're going to use is D, which is the diameter of the toilet roll. Okay, we're going to use this size quite a lot, and we're going to use half that size. So we're going to have half D. Okay, so from that, we can start to build. So we're going to start with the parts that need to dry, so we can give them time to dry while we build other bits, okay? So let's begin with the feet. Now, I've got a piece of scrap cardboard. Okay, I've got one foot measured out. We're going to, we're going to measure the other foot. So you can see from my foot here, I have got um, the length of the foot there, which is T, and the diameter, which is the width this way, okay? So you can see how I'm using the toilet roll to help me measure so you can copy me. Corrugated cardboard is fluted, okay? Um, mine's got a single flute, and this flute is easy to bend along this, which we call the grain of the cardboard. That way, it's a lot hard to bend and it tends to get a bit messy. So we need to use this very carefully so we get it to help us fold parts, not make it difficult. So I've left that as a reminder for you and me. You can see it on the table. Uh, we can see what we're aiming for here. So we're going to work on these little parts here, the feet, okay? All right, here we go. So I've got my bit of cardboard. I've got the grain running down this way because I need to fold it like this. So um, you can do this out of pencil. I'm going to measure there's the length of T. There's the diameter of T, so I'm do a little mark there, little mark there, little mark there. And straight away, start to cut that out. Right, how do we start this? Well, we're going to fold it in half to start with, which you can see because of the grain, it's easy to do. Uh, fold it like this. Now we're going to fold it again. All right, so effectively, we're folding it to four parts into the middle. So we're getting all those parts to meet like that. So it's almost like a little, I mean, it's called a little book. Okay, everything meets. Now what we're actually after is a triangle. If I fold this up like this, you can see how you get a triangular shape, which is the foot we're after. Now we need to now stick this. So what we've done is we've created ourselves a tab, okay, an area we can glue. Let's go. Ooh. So I'm going to put some print stick on there and fold it over. Now print stick's great if you give it a little bit of a wiggle, okay, and try and get that to connect up. If you squeeze it too tight, you can always kind of push it back out again with a pair of scissors. And we need something to hold that on. So we could use an elastic band, but the elastic bands I've got are a little bit too strong. So I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape just to kind of hold that together while it dries. Put that to one side. Okay. If you can repeat that and make a second foot, that's brilliant. Right, my leg and your leg needs to be the length, okay, of two of the toilet rolls, okay? Which we can, we can do that, can't we? So two of the toilet rolls, uh, two toilet rolls here. Um, I've got this piece of cardboard, and this time we want the grain running down the length of the leg. So it's a bit stronger. We don't want the leg folding in half across this way. That'd be really weird to have a leg do that. Okay, so I'm going to get my pencil and um, oh, the other thing is the width. So I can see the diameter there. I can see the length I've got right. So the diameter here, you can see um, I've got D, I've got half D and half D, and there's a length of a toilet roll there, and then a length of the toilet roll there. Okay, so. We try and copy this. So at this end here, we need a toilet roll kind of sketched around here. Then about halfway down here, we're going to have a smaller one. We're going to keep it in line. So there's our kind of pencil line there. So halfway around there, we've got about half a toilet roll diameter. And you find that the smaller print sticks do the same. 
or the size of around a 10 pence piece. You know, some of that kind of size there. So that's coming out to the knee. And then we want that to go back uh, to here, where we then have the length of the foot. So the foot's coming down here. Okay, and we've got another bit there. All right, another 10 pence piece or half a diameter of this bit connecting up to that bit there. And we can hopefully see, if I pan around it, that leg there. Okay. Right. So I'm going to cut that out. All right, can we use the same leg then? Now that we've got one and we're happy with it, we can use the same leg. Make sure we've got the grain running the length of the leg again and sketch around that and then copy what we've just done. Okay, here we go. Two legs. Scrap this cardboard, get them out of the way. And what we've got is these extra bits here then that just give it a bit more strength and a bit more kind of I don't know, artistic flair and style. Right, we need two of these chopped out. We can use a scrap bit here. This is going to form um, the kind of the top of the leg. Okay, so the top of the thigh. Now this is the same diameter as your toilet roll. So we need two of these, just two, okay? I'm going to sketch around there. Green direction doesn't matter because it's a round circle. There's no parts longer than another. There's our two parts there. And I'm going to chop those out. Get rid of the little bits that are too small that we can't use. Okay, so they're going to sit back on our character here. You can see they're going to sit on the outside there. There's one, right, and there's the other. Now, actually, I haven't glued mine on, but um, we'll do. We'll glue ours. Uh, and they're the other small ones. Now, the small ones, you can see there's one here, and there's one on the inside of the leg as well. So that we need two and another two. So we need four of the little ones. So let's sketch those out there. Sketch one there. Now, this bit here is, is the half a diameter of the toilet roll, okay, or the size of a print stick. Okay, the smaller size, sketched around, all the size of a 10 pence piece. All those are good to help you measure this part out, okay? I can get three on there. Let's stick another one on here, shall we? Mm -hmm. Brilliant, well, let's chop those out. So, by this point, we should have four little ones and two big ones. Um, and two legs, which obviously will flip like that. Right, so to glue these together, we just need some simple print stick. Now you can see the slight change in color of the cardboard. I kind of like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna vary the colors so you can see the parts a little bit bigger. We don't need to use masking tape with these because there's nothing trying to force them apart like the little feet. So these will just sit there and should behave themselves. Put another one on the other side there. Okay, that's one. Then we need to do the mirror image of that. So you can see I've turned my leg around. Uh, I'm going to go dark this time. Stick that on there. Give it a wiggle. Make sure that glue connects. On there again. Let's turn that one around. Let's put that on that side. Let's work on the body. This is perhaps the most fiddly part of the build. Here we go. So this is what we're after. I'll show you in that view. All right. So we've got a long part here. This bit is uh, the length of a toilet roll plus half. Well, or um, the diameter. Okay, so the length of a toilet roll plus the diameter of the toilet roll. Then we've got a little bit of a gap here. This is the neck. And then after that, we've got the head. Now the head's this funny part here. Can you see it's slightly bigger than the diameter of the toilet roll? So let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. 
And that bit is the length of the toilet roll, plus a little bit bigger. Okay, so I've written on here T plus the diameter for that part there. And this one is 1D with a little bit extra and D in terms of the width down here. Okay, let's go. So let's try and mark this bit out. So I've got a bit of card ready. Okay, next thing, grain has to run down. Very important because we need to be able to fold the head round. This slip, by the way, is the mouth. Okay, we'll come on to that in a moment. Right, so I'm going to slide that all the way to the, to the right hand side of my bit of scrap card that I've chopped out here. And um, here we go. Now this part here is uh, about the width of, width of tape, really. Now that kind of size, so I've sketched something there. Then we've got a diameter's worth. Okay, then we've got another bit of tape over here. All right, so we're getting the full width there. Then we've got the length of the whole thing. So the, the back coming up to here, plus a diameter up to there. I'm gonna draw that line along there. Sketch this one in here, start to do these bits down here. Okay, uh, this is the tummy down here. The tummy is about a diameter off the bottom. So there, and sketch that all the way down there. And sketch that line all the way down there. And that one down there. Okay, so we don't want this bit. We don't want this bit. We're going to um, draw this part up here. And curve that round and again curve that round so it's the mirror image. Okay, and round the top. This is where the shoulders are. We then got the arms. The arms come through a little slit here. Then the neck starts. Now the neck needs to be narrow. So we're going to step in, step in, and draw a neck. In terms of how wide that neck is, we could use our 10 pence piece or the print stick to kind of create that. A little bit up there, draw that in. We're going to go to the edge there for the moment. And then this one goes all the way across. Okay, now how far is it going again? It's going the length of a toilet roll. Right, from, um, you look at it on here, into a toilet roll. Yeah, so length of a toilet roll plus a diameter. So diameter there, length of a toilet roll there. So on that, diameter there, that's length of a toilet roll. Is this whole long piece here. And, um, and on this bit here, this is the head, okay? You agree that's about halfway? Just below halfway, we're gonna create our mouth. That's gonna go. Now the mouth meets this line here that comes up here, this is the neck. So it goes all along there and stops there. So we've got to somehow chop that bit out. Okay, and then we're gonna roll all this bit around. Right, so let me go over that in 10 and just show you a bit clear what we've got. It's what we're after. Let's chop that out. Okay, here we go. So we are going to fold this bit now and, and glue some parts of it. So I'm going to fold this line here. All right, I'm going to fold that line there. Like so. Okay. Then um, we're going to roll all this bit round. Now, this bit is going to go inside the head. So I'm going to start that first and just roll that like that. This part goes around to form the front of the head. So I'm just, I'm just getting lots of bends in there. Okay. And then start to wrap that round and get a feel of where it's got to go. Now you can, you can start to expand with this bit and see exactly how big you want your head to be. Um, and, and tweak it around a little bit. Now, I've got this part here coming around so far on my bit of cardboard. 
that I don't, I don't want to see that bit. So I'm going to actually chop that a little bit shorter. Can you see that? And this one is doing a little bit the same. So I want it to stop around here behind the head. So I'm just going to chop that a little bit shorter. Let's have a look at that now. That's great. Okay, so I'm happy with it. Uh, you might side your heads too long, too short. Yours will end up being slightly different. Just go with, go with your gut feel, change it around. So I'm gonna stick with that for the moment. I've got a longer head than my other head, but that's fine. And um, I'm going to put some glue on here now and let that dry. So print stick there, print stick just there. They're the only two bits we've got glue for the moment. Fold that round. They're not gonna stay. They will definitely spring back. So we need to get them to behave with some masking tape or elastic bands. Okay, so I'm going to pull that around, stick that there to hold it, pull that around. Make sure you put enough glue on there, otherwise later when you take the tape off, it could come undone again. Okay, so we've got a bigger jaw we can see that the fold line hasn't come around the front of our head. Um, and these bits uh, come around, they're the kind of shoulders if you like. But what we're missing here is the two cuts here where the arms tuck in. So I'm just gonna do a little cut. The length of the cut is, you guessed it, half a diameter. Go back, length of 10p. We'll start with that. We might have to go back and cut a little bit more. But we've got a little slip down there that we can slot that into. It just needs to be a tight slip. Okay, we'll leave that for the moment. I'm going to use um, my scissors just to poke that hole through there. Ready for the coat hanger to attach. And this part is ready to dry. However, there's one more bit we can do, which is to work on to make the jaw. Let's do that next. Okay, to make the jaw, we need uh, a part that comes around like this. You can see how once we chop that bit out, we've got a curve at the bottom, flat at the top, and that's the way it'll go around like that. Now we've got to get the, the, the length of tabs right around the back so they don't overlap um, and they don't start coming around the front like the top of our head did, but we can, we can adjust that as we want to. So to make this part here, I've got another bit of cardboard, a little bit of scrap. I've got the grain running down because we're going to curve it that way. It is the length of a toilet roll tube. Okay. Right. Mark it out. We'll start with that flat edge there. This bit here, uh, you can start to see how big it needs to be. Um, so on mine, um, because I've got a bigger head, if I made this too small, the chin wouldn't, wouldn't kind of cover this part of the chin. I, I want it to cover that. So I need to make sure it's a little bit bigger than this, but not so big that it starts to go and hide the whole neck. So my one here, I would think is a little bit big. So I'm kind of gauging that with my own design, thinking, okay, so I want it slightly bigger than that. So there's where it is at the moment. I'm gonna go a little bit higher to there. And I'm going to do a mark there and a mark there where it matches my current chin. And I'm going to sketch up to that, that middle point there, and down. But remember, with the grain running this way. And chop that out. Put lots of curve into it. And I'm getting ready. To assess that one. Now I've got a nice big mouth line there, you can really see it, okay, because I cut this groove here nice and big. Now I want to stick that around the back there. Okay, currently I've got that bit of masking tape around there. This will actually hide that masking tape, um, so I can probably stick it over the top. Here we go. So lots of masking tape on here um, and print stick to connect that bit on. Here comes the mask tape. Pulls that round, make sure I've got it lined up by mouth on there. And then connect that bit at the back. Okay. So that bit 
does its job, the glue does its job. Okay, so look a little bit messy, but I'm happy with the positioning. The mask tape's holding all together. Let's put that to one side and let that dry. Great. While it's drying, we can add one more part to it, which is the goggles. Okay, so goggles, have a look at mine. So they are uh, quite small um, in terms of the, you know, the height of the goggles. So they're less than our kind of little D diameters we've been using. Uh, and we've got these holes here using a hole punch. Um, and they are again, pretty sticked on. Uh, let's make some of those. Okay. And you can expand with these and create your own kind of style of goggles. Main thing, grain direction again, has to be right to get those around the front. I'm going to use the other side of the card, which is slightly different tone, so I can see the goggles a bit clearer. Okay. So I'm looking on here thinking I want my goggles about that long there. A quick snip. And there. Okay. Uh, and I want to curve mine round. Like that. And curve them around there. Okay, so I've got kind of oblong shape. Now I'm thinking, okay, well, they'll be somewhere for the nose, won't they? So I'm going to cut a little triangle in. You might decide you want to leave your top of your goggles flat. I think I'll, I'll do that on mine. I think I'll try that. And at this point, we now need the hole punch. Hole punch comes in. And I've got to, I've got to see where the hole punch actually comes down to to make sure I get this in the right spot. You might need to squeeze the cardboard to flatten it to get it in there a bit better. That works much better, okay. So I'm just testing it, see where it goes. You might have to do this a few attempts to get it exactly where you want it. Turn it round. I remember how far you pushed it in before. Okay, I got, I got lucky, look at that, that's not bad. Okay, I'm ready to stick those on. Press stick. Into position. Right, we're getting close to doing the nose, aren't we? All right. The nose just basically is a rolled up piece of cardboard that goes into a hole. So being very careful where my hands are, I'm going to twist the scissors. Okay, so without very much pressure, they find their way through around where I want my nose to go. Let's try that. I'm going to move my goals over a little bit. Okay, and um, find a scrap bit of cardboard that I can make my nose from. In terms of the length of the nose, that's up to you. It could be like a Pinocchio character. I'm thinking something about half a diameter is about the right length for me. How much this bit is depends on how big your hole is. So I think that's probably too much. I'm going to chop a little more. So I've, I've got a kind of square here that's a diameter. Right, half a diameter by half a diameter, or well, you could fit a 10p in there, you know, you can see the print sticker. So I'm going to roll that up using the grain again to help me and try and push it into that eeny weeny hole. I can get it in there, it's going to stay with no glue needed. Oh, that's working good. Oh, yes, that's quite a long nose. Look at that creating all sorts of different characters here. Big chin, completely different kind of character to our last one, well, not completely different, but different style, like it. Okay, that concludes that part there. We can now leave that to one side, too dry. Right, let's make some arms. The arms are all one part with the hands on the end. If you look at the sizing, we've got a diameter toilet roll, in the center there. We then have from the outside of that diameter, we've got the length of a toilet roll there and oh, the length of a toilet roll there. And the hands are beyond that. And the hands, you imagine them sitting inside a circle, is, you know, again, a toilet roll diameter. Let's mark that out. Okay. So on here, I'll start off 
uh, a bottomless card. This one doesn't really matter the grain direction. So what kind of offcuts you've got, just work now with what you have. We still have to make the wings, for instance, and those two wings are both A4 size. So you want two sheets of A4 equivalent cardboard to make those. I'll talk about those in a moment. Let's do this. So I'm going to pop that in the middle, draw around that toilet roll to give ourselves a D for diameter. From that point, if you remember, we fold it over, do a little mark there, fold it that way, do a little mark over here, and um, the hands go from there. So I'm going to sketch uh, up to that point. Now, in terms of how big this is, again, it's probably half a D or the size of a 10 pence piece. You can see that's the wrist really, isn't it? That's there. Okay, and they are stepped up. So I'm drawing those circles, okay, level with the top of that circle there. Can you see that? No. So I'm then gonna sketch from there up to that point, and from there to that point. So I get this kind of arc, like a really flattened boomerang. Now my hands go beyond that. So I'll do this in pencil first. So my thumb sticks up. I'm then going to draw a square. And my fingers then go out from that square. One, two, three, four. One hand. Okay, thumb sticks up. Square. One finger. Two figure, three, and four. Right, just sketch around those quickly. Okay, so that's what we're after. So that's our, our arms finished then. We need to make uh, some parts that actually just are a rolled up piece of cardboard to give our character a bit more strength in, in certain areas uh, and then make them a bit more 3D. So starting from the bottom. Inside here we have this bit here which curls from the tummy here and goes round like that and it sits in the hook of the coat hanger. That bit, okay, we're going to start off and we're going to say it is uh, the tummy roll. All right, so we'll make one of those in our own. Then inside that is another roll, okay, and that helps to keep the legs in the middle and give this bit more bit more strength. And that we're going to call the hip roll, okay. And finally, at the top here, we've got another piece of cardboard wrapped this way around, which we're going to call uh, the chest roll. So let's make those parts there. Each of these bits here are very very similar. They're all the diameter of a toilet roll. And apart from one, they're all the length of three toilet rolls, except for the tummy roll. I've given this one a bit extra, so you can cut it down depending on how your character ends up. There's a little bit of adjustment there for you, okay? So let's start with that one. So this one here is, as I said, the length of three toilet rolls plus a little bit extra. And it's the width or the diameter of a toilet roll. So let's do a mark there. Mark there, mark there. So you use several marks, it's easy to draw a straight line, isn't it? And then um, one toilet roll there, one toilet roll there, one toilet roll there. One, two, three, plus that little bit extra right there. Now, I haven't mentioned this, but the, the grain this time, we need it running this way, because these are gonna roll up like this. So I've got my grain running vertically down the cart on this piece. I'm going to join that line out as best I can. Use a wheel if you want to. Okay, and chop that bit out in a minute. Let's mark the next one. The next one is going to be the length of three toilet rolls again. So there's the diameter of a toilet roll. Diameter of a toilet roll. Diameter of a toilet roll. And three lengths. One, two, three. But we're not giving this this extra bit this time. To there. 
and join those up like that. And the next one up is going to be the same size as that. So we're going to do another diameter there, there, and there. Carry that line straight up again and draw that like that all along there. Okay, so if I go over that with a marker, you should be able to see that a bit clearer as to what I'm doing. Nothing complicated about this bit, pretty straightforward. We can definitely do this bit, no problem. Let me show you. That's what we're after. Okay, if you chop those bits out now um, and just stop to roll them up, that's great. The wings, you're going to need two bits of corrugate cardboard, A4 size, with the grain running the long length of the cardboard itself. Okay, so after you've chopped that out, so we just use a piece of piece of A4, draw around it, chop that out, okay? And um, we want you to then fold that in half as best you can. So you can wiggle it around to get that, okay? Now after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna then chop the feathers at the end here and taper it. So in terms of sizes, let's talk about that now. Okay, so I have got the feathers themselves are about uh, a diameter in kind of the, the length of the cut on those. And you see they curve round. Okay, so we've got the top of the wing is straight. The bottom of the wing um, tapers out to that kind of curve there. So we'll start with the curve and then draw those out. In terms of how big this bit is, it's kind of the length of half a toilet roll, if that helps you. You see that? Okay, let's go then. So I've got my bit folded and ready. Let's start off. So I've got, with my pencil, okay, we're saying about half a toilet roll, maybe a little bit more, not less. Okay, half a toilet roll there. And then we've got this bit here which curves round. So I kind of curve like that. And we're gonna sketch from here down to there. So you might wanna find something straight to give you a hand. Could be a ruler to get that to run all the way down the line. Right, now these ones then are gonna be the feathers and we said that they're about a diameter's worth. Okay, so nice big chunky feathers. They're just gonna be the V cuts. Okay, as so they come out and they're gonna go around like that. And then they're gonna go like that. And then we'll stick it for that. Okay, so if I pen that in, you can see it a bit clearer. And that's what we're after. Let's chop that out. Now it depends how you want to do this. You might be able to cut through both bits of cardboard, which gets both sides to match. If your scissors aren't good enough for that, or you're finding it hard to cut it with, your, with the strength in your wrist, then you could just chop one side out, fold it, pencil through, and then chop the other side out. So have a go, whichever way you want to do it. Okay, so with your two wings now, we're just gonna staple right down the bottom, down here. Okay, just a single staple about there. And another one down here. To hold those together. And those now should slide on the coating down. So we've got to the point where we're going to begin to assemble. Okay, so I turn my coat hanger upside down. It's a medium sized coat hanger. Uh, I'm going to slide these down the end. So there's wing number one. There's wing number two. Oop, now my staples come undone. That could have happened to me as well. So it's all right, not a problem. Put another one in. You might like to put a little bit of glue in there. That helps if it keeps doing that. But, um, that's behaving. Okay, so I've got that sorted. But they're pretty good on there. So I might not need that bit of tape around the back to hold those on. I'm going to put another staple in that at the side just because when you're out and about, you don't really want it to suddenly come apart. So you've got a few more staples to hold that together. Okay. Now what I might do is um, put a bit of curve around there, a little character, a bit of pattern using the masking tape. 
it's kind of doing two things for it. It's making it look a little bit more stylized, but also helping to hold those wings in place and stop them misbehaving. So again, if you haven't got master tape, cell tape will do this, no problem. Even stronger than master tape. So I've got my wings and they've got these kind of little tips here. Next bit, let's start to look at the body. Let's assemble it. We've got our wings on, we've added our tape. I've just slid two elastic bands down the end and I want to put two more, one here and one here. So we've got, at the moment, five elastic bands in use. Just check, we've got one, two, three, four. Just coming down here. And that again, get someone to give you a hand if that's a bit tricky. Depends on the size of your elastic bands, but these are where um, our character's gonna tuck their arms under, like they're holding onto the wings. And these are the shoulder straps like on a, a rucksack that again helps the character attach themselves to the wings. Okay, that's that. Next part is I have um, just slid the fifth elastic band up to this point here, okay, which is going to be the bit that holds the chest in place. All right, I've, you've noticed I've done a bit of artwork, so I've kind of played around, added a bit of graphics to this, so feel free to stop and do the same. Um, I've drawn some detail on my legs, okay? So stop and do those bits. It's easier to do those parts while they're flat than when it's 3D. Well, they, okay. Right, let's connect the feet on. So the feet, I've drawn these little circles that to me represent the back of their feet. I'm just gonna come back with my scissors and cut um, just halfway, no more than halfway, but just less than halfway up like that. And then turn that around again. There's the back of my thing there, and cut that just halfway there. Okay, and I'm going to slide that onto my foot like so. So a little toe stick out the front. Just like this one. Okay, should be a nice, good fit, tight fit. Right to uh, attach your character together. If you remember, we made this little buttonhole down here and we used a pair of scissors. Again, be careful with the scissors, but just make a little hole there, watch where your hands are, and just make that little hole for that now to slide through that bit there. Okay, so start to come together. Let's get the arms. The arms, okay, they have to tuck underneath these shoulder straps here, under the shoulder straps there and through these little slits. Now, before we try and start feeding it through, let's just see if these fit inside your slots there, okay, that you've done. Okay, so I'm gonna push that down like that. I want my arms to be tilting upwards. And I've, I've tweaked mine uh, and they go fine. So you can see that my arms fit down below the neckline, okay, the shoulder line. So just check yours do the same. You might have to cut these little grooves a little bit further yeah, these ones here to get the, the arm to slot down. <clears throat> okay, so now I've checked that, I'm going to take that out again. I'm going to feed my arm through that shoulder strap. Okay, whoa, all around it. Uh, and feed it through this shoulder strap on this side. And pull that all, and then you can see what we're going to do next. We're going to tuck that underneath the shoulders, okay, into those little slits we just talked about, and we know that's going to fit and behave ourselves, fit itself, okay. Right, we'll, we'll play around with these in a moment, because there's still more fiddling around to do, but you can see the character start to look as if it's attaching now to the wings itself. The hook of the coat hanger should be facing forward, coming through like that. All right, let's, um, let's make the legs next, in terms of attaching them. Now, if you remember, we had these three bits of roll, didn't we? We had the tummy, I put a little T on mine. That was the longest one, the T for the tummy. And then we had these two, which was the hip uh, and the chest. Okay, the chest, 
Uh, we can do that in a moment. Let's let's concentrate on the hip and the tummy. So I'm going to take um, the the hip one, which is again the one that was three toilet rolls long, and roll that up again. And that's going to go between the two legs, like so. Okay. All right. Now, for that to work, we need to get an elastic band through the middle. So we're after that. Fifth elastic band. One, two, three, four, five, four. Oh, I've told you a lie, we need six elastic bands. In fact, we probably need seven. Seven, hang on. Okay, so we're gonna take this one, which is uh, the hip one, okay? And we're gonna try and put an elastic band through the middle of that to connect these on the ends like so. Yeah, to create this part here. Okay, so this one here was, again, three toilet rolls long. Right, now for this to work, we need to make a hole through this bit here. Okay, so again, watch your hands not on the other side. Put that on there, no pressure, just twist it like this, it'll find its way through. There you go, like that. We want a slightly big hole there because we've got to get the elastic band looped through that hole. So to the other side, pop that on there. Like so. Okay, let's put one in. So I'm gonna push that through there. I won't use the scissors to push it through because the scissors will cut the rubber band, even no matter how careful you're trying to be. So I'm gonna use my pencil just to try and push that through there. You see it's quite fiddly. Just be as patient as you can. This is a good joining technique. You can use this a lot of times for different things. Now that will pull back through unless we put something through there. So what's this we do is just use a scrap bit of card with the grain running this way and fold it to make like a little peg. That little peg, okay, which is less than the diameter of a toilet roll in length. We'll tuck through there like that and then we can pull that and that's a really sturdy joint. Now that seems cool until we try and do the other side and it's a lot harder. So for that, we need some assistance. So we're gonna use uh, the paper clip. So you can see that bit is pulled through really nicely and you get a really strong joint. The tricky bit is now getting that through the other leg. Okay, and at this point, I do recommend we now use the paper clip. So I'm just gonna use this to make a little hook like that. Right, here we go. Uh, we are going to get the other outside leg we're gonna get our little peg, okay, the little pin that goes through the elastic band to stop it pulling back. So we've got that ready. Okay, that's this bit again. And um, we now need to squeeze the elastic band like so and try and push that through there, at which point that gets really hard. So we're gonna use this bit to hook it through. So it's a question of getting this bit, we use the narrow side, there's two sides to a peg clip, we use the narrow one. Ooh. And we're going to poke that okay, again the right way. Yep. This is the outside, isn't it, with a circle? And poke that through there, hook it through the elastic band, and then pull it back through it. Look at that. That worked really well. Take that off. Use our little peg system. Slide that through there and pull that apart. So that's what you should have. That bit there with the outer circles here, the pegs there. We got a really strong joint there, which is going to form our, our legs. So these will actually pivot and move as well. In between that, we're going to have not the long tummy, not the chest, but the hip. And we're going to roll that up. We're going to roll it this time around this elastic band like that. There you go. Almost stands up. Okay, so that's what we're after. Don't worry about this bit here. Uh, that'll that'll tuck behind the other part. It shouldn't be a problem. If you really want to, you can you can stick it down with a bit of bit of put stick. 
but um, I shouldn't worry too much about it. We'll leave that there for the moment. Back to this bit. Let's put the chest in place because that's quite straightforward. So again, the um, tummy was the really long one. Let's go for the next chest. Roll that up like that. Turn it to its side and pop that underneath this elastic band here and over the top of the arm because it helps to hold the arms in place as well, this part. So we've got a bit of a shoulder strap. And you can come back with your with your little sharpie and do a little kind of buckle on there and buckle on these bits, you know, later. Go back and have some fun with that. So there's your chest doing that part there. We can now bring these bits down into position. That my hands are going to hold on to. You can even curl the fingers back as if he's kind of grabbing onto that strap. Same on the side here. Uh, we've got the chest part there. So we can now come back and you can see where this bit's going to go. But before we tuck that in, we're going to use this part here, which was the long tummy. Now, if you remember, we said this bit was going to be three toilet rolls long plus a bit extra, and we might have to trim it. This is the point where we find out whether we need to trim or not. So I'm going to wrap that all the way around like that. Just wind it up. Okay, and we're going to tuck that up there behind the chest, but also tuck into this bit. So you might find this bit here is too wide to go between these parts here. Okay, and your design. Um, so you might need to trim those a little bit. I'm just doing a quick gauge there and looking at the width and thinking actually, you know what? Look, I can trim mine a little bit more. I think that would help. So just gonna trim that back a bit like that. That should do it. Okay, this bit's a bit fiddly. So I've got to lift that up, tuck this behind it. So this chest piece is, is really good. It's holding the arms in position. It's holding everything tightly back. It's now holding the legs and everything. And I've got to tuck that into the coat hanger. See what's happening here. Tuck that into that bit there, like that. And there you go. All of a sudden, it comes together. It's got a little tail here. Just trim parts off like that. There is your character, ready to start attaching now to the kite part. Well done. Excellent. So now we're going to start to build the kite. The kite is made up from a pillowcase and you can see from the picture we've got a long garden cane coming through the bottom um, where the string comes off the ends of that and a, basically a garden cane frame running inside here. All the joints here, shown in green, uh, actually represent garden hose that's going to use to join those up. This bit here is an interesting joint, so we're going to spend a bit of time looking at that. Um, and once we've assembled this, uh, we can then decorate the kite itself. So on here you can see I've got the different parts. Um, I've got the bamboo canes, I've got the garden hose, um, some of which has been cut, and I've got the longer length down here. Now, I used my hacksaw <coughs> to chop these to length, and I knew how big to cut them by using my pillowcase as a guide. So you can see the length of these parts here. Okay, match those. They've got to make sure they fit inside. Um, better to have a little bit of slack than to be too tight. And um, you can see that that top one there would fit just inside both ends, so I can actually staple this shut afterwards. Um, I mean, you, can, you can stitch it together with needle and thread if you want to, but for speed I'm just going to staple it. And then obviously for the long one to come out, you, this is no problem because it will come out here, but at this end I've just nipped it. So I've just got a pair of scissors and just snipped the corner, okay, just there, so you can see where I've snipped it so that that cane will stick out at that end. And the other place is at the top here. Okay, so at the very top, you can see I've snipped it there. Okay, for that is that complex joint I want to talk to a little bit 
and more about in a moment. Right, let's have a look at these canes down, what I've done with this hosing. The hosing, each of these bits here, uh, is again the length of a toilet roll tube. Okay, so nothing, nothing different there. There's no joint cut in these ones here, just a pair of scissors cut through. This is where you might need some help to cut these um, so we don't have anyone cutting their fingers and having an accident. So I've got that same joint at the top of both these edges here. Down here, it's a slightly different joint, okay? Um, that is the same length again, but with a V cut, cut through like this. And what I've done there is I first cut straight, and then I went back and cut diagonally to cut that V shape out. And with that, it means we can bend this up, okay? Run that long cane through here, and then connect the vertical cane there uh, to do that kind of T-section joint. It works quite well. Now I'm bending mine back like that as opposed to the other way, okay? So I can slide that on like this and go past the end, okay? And then connect that one into there. And it's all looking quite good. I'm tempted just to put a bit of tape on there to hold it in place. But before I do, let's look at this joint at the top. So for that to happen, we need uh, another bit of hose pipe. Um, we need to do a little connection up there. Okay, so this top joint up here, for that to work, it needs to have the cane running all the way through it. But we've got another stick, the tent rod coming up here to connect to it. So we need to open a hole here, okay, so that that can tuck through, but this rod can keep passing through. So for that to happen, we need quite a big cut in here. So this can squish together, that could jump out and allow that piece to come past. So let's have a go. So I'm gonna start by cutting right down the middle. So I've kind of flatten it a little bit just to get the scissors in there. And then come from this side and cut a much wider shape. So please get some assistance with this bit. Um, from an adult because it is tricky and we don't want you to cut your fingers by accident. That wouldn't be good. What a hose pipe is, is it's obviously a plastic material, but it has this webbing running through it to give it extra strength. So there's actually bits of string running through it which you can see pop out like nylon string. So we've got a very wide throat there. Uh, okay, now obviously before we start putting it into the pillowcase, we need to get this into position. So I'm gonna slide that all the way through and put that on the end. Now what I'm looking at is, before I start to put it together, can I see that that bit will go behind it if I cut enough away to get that in? And what I'm after, or what you're after, is a really nice, tight fit and that looks pretty good to me. So a bit of uh, manipulating, that's great. Um, so I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that. You could put more tape around there, you could bind it with string, gaffer tape, something else to make sure that's nice and sturdy, but that looks great. So I'm gonna pull that out again. I've done my test and I'm now ready to slip it into the pillowcase. So I'm gonna start that from the open end clearly and feed that all the way through. Okay. So I fed the whole frame through the side. I did put a little bit of masking tape on there just to kind of stop it sliding around, just to get it in a bit easier. Um, and I've left about an equal amount either end sticking out. Okay, and you can see at the top here, where we cut this opening, um, our unusual bit of uh, garden hose with that loop at the top that we're gonna try and push our uh, tent rod through, okay? All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna seal the end up because I'm happy with that. Stop it all falling back through. And just use a simple stapler to do that for speed. Okay, and there is our Type frame. 
um, and kite material ready for painting and decorating, which is the next bit that I'm going to do. Okay, so here comes the pizza base. Now remember, um, if you haven't got a pizza base, you could use a plate to, to basically get this piece of card just the right size. So I'm going to try and get that in the middle as best I can. I'm going to use my Sharpie to run through. Now at this point, I'll just warn you, I've put cardboard underneath because I don't want this to go through onto the table. That's the, the Sharpie, the permanent marker, or the paint that I'm going to do. So I'm just being a bit careful of the furniture. So I'm going to run around there, careful as I can. But this is where you can be, you know, personally as creative as you want to be. So it might be you have got a range of Sharpies you want to use. It might be you have fabric paints. It might be you're going to get the sewing machine out. Uh, there's loads of different ways you can decorate your kite. Now I can see through the fabric. I'm just going to sketch this on the other side now. I'll freehand sketch it. So that both sides match because you will see the kite from both sides. It'll look better if we've got a design that matches on each side. Now when we paint, <coughs> we're gonna we're gonna use this obviously as our guide to paint up to these lines. So I'm now gonna do some kind of flames coming out the side. So I'm gonna do a bit of a gap and do a swirly pattern here. Okay, I'm happy with it. So I'm going to turn over and uh, draw again what I see on the other side. Okay, so we've now got that on both sides. Back to the pizza base or your circle of card. What I do now is carefully do myself a swirl. Quite big. And then come back and do another line just outside that. All right. And join that one up to there. So if you imagine us chop this bit out here, and we chop all this little bit here, we should have a lovely kind of swirl pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that out next. I've cut the swirl out. And I'm going to use this as a, as a painting template. So the first thing I want to do is to um, paint my sun yellow, maybe with a kind of white center. So I'm going to just quote pattern, same on the other side, and then um, these perhaps red, that's what I'm thinking, and then go back over here and dab the red around this bit. So I've got this kind of red swirl. But I've sort of got to wait for the point where the paint's dry enough. Then I'm going to dab blue around these. Um, and go from there. So when I've done that, um, I'll, I'll bring it back and, and show you what I've done. Okay, get painting. Okay, while this is drying, uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to, to, to create these parts, which are the handles for the kite string, okay? So I've got my uh, milk jugs, and you can see that what I've done is left a bit of a lip around the side. There's something called compound curvature. So you're leaving lots of curve on here, which actually gives this, even though you've chopped a lot of the material away, quite a bit of enough strength to do what it needs to do. Okay, so we now have two handles, a left and a right. So we've now got to attach the string to these ends here and the string that goes through the legs. So when you pull the kite back, Icarus will move back with it and some little string to here that connects to these points here on the kite. 
Okay, and the rod obviously just pushes behind that part there. Okay, just got myself another paper clip. So I'm going to pull my paper clip through. Get it through like that. Okay, and then use that little hook to pull it back through. That's the quickest way to get it to go through that part there. And tie a knot. I'm going to do this part. comes down you need to have both hands on your handles to control the kite so uh, there needs to be something else holding the tent rod so I've come up with this idea at the moment if you can think of a better one be good because it's, it's okay but it could be better so what I've done is I've got a longer bit of hose pipes so this is the length of almost two um, toilet tubes and um, I've got this one uh, further out on purpose so that it bends back. So the idea is if you imagine that and your belt goes through here for your trousers and this bit bends back and you put the rod in there like so, then you're able to hold up the kite and steer with your hands. Okay? So that's the idea of how to kind of put that bit together and how to control the whole thing. 
I can uh, lengthen the rod. I okay, guess just a tent rod and go higher, but I suggest you go for a thicker tent rod. Um, and all you do then is just adjust your string as you would with any ordinary kite. But I, I've got a fair degree of control with this. Um, I'm holding the tent rod with my right hand, and equally I, you can do it with your left. Um, and it's behaving beautifully. I've got good control.